Oh, exactly. Yeah, right. Two. All right. Good evening, everyone. Three ninety nine. Like to uh, call this meeting to order at six o two p.m. All right. And our meeting begins with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I invite everyone to uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we have an uh, agenda before us. Uh, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So much. We, didn't, we, we need to do a roll, roll call. call. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can we do a roll I call? I was jumping in with you. <laughs> We're just rolling with you. Reverend Eilert. Here. This is Jaranek. Here. This is Mangan. Here. Dr. Swetchenow. Here. This is Washburn. Here. All right. Thank you. Just so excited to get to this agenda. <laughs> All right. We have an agenda before us. Uh, can we have a motion to approve our agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Jaranek. Yes. Mrs. Mangan. Yes. Dr. Swetchenow. Yes. This is Washburn. Yes. Reverend Eilert. Yes. You and then uh, minutes we're in the board docs. Any additions, corrections to the minutes as presented? None. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. This is Mangan. Yes. Dr. Swetchenow. Yes. This is Washburn. Yes. Reverend Eilert. Yes. This is Jaranek. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, now, moving on to the welcoming of guests. Uh, we have lots of guests here today. Uh, exciting as the school year begins, lots of folks here, uh, former superintendents, the heads of our booster groups, uh, some parents, uh, foundation folks, and lots of new teachers. And so we're excited to have all of you here at our meeting tonight. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, we also have the hearing of the public tonight. Are there any folks uh, signed up for the hearing of the public? I have none. Okay, thank you. Then let's move on to the introduction of the new teachers. Mr. Collier. Good evening, everybody. I'm Garth Collier, uh, the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Um, and it is my pleasure to be able to introduce to you some of our new uh, teaching staff and some of our long-term subs for the year. Um, we've had a great start to the school year. Um, I can't think of anything better that they would probably want to do after spending five days with our kids would be to come to a board meeting in an evening. Um, but um, we really just want to make sure to welcome them and have an opportunity for our board to express their gratitude of, of uh, the following folks working with our students. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through each building um, and list off some teachers. So uh, teachers, when, when your name's being called, if you could just wave so people can uh, know who you are. And I appreciate you guys being here tonight. From the high school, um, intervention specialist Debbie Howard, a PE health teacher Cassidy Hudson, a math teacher Heather Kincaid, a math teacher Gabe Krause, a social studies teacher Kate Smith, and a Tiger Lab teacher Hannah Scherpenberg. Um, also, we have um, a long term sub from the high school, um, an ELA teacher Haley Grimmett. From the middle school, we have Christina Stanton Lee, who is a science teacher. From LIS, we have Cassidy Bowman, who's an intervention specialist. From LES, we have Jensen Adlita, a third grade teacher. Jackie Jackson-Dean, a school psychologist. Emma Kay, a fourth grade teacher. From LECC, we have Miranda Busemeyer, a kindergarten teacher. Megan Yates, also a kindergarten teacher. Uh, Danielle uh, Lange, an intervention specialist. And our other long-term subs from the middle school science teacher, Zach Beasley, an LES fourth grade teacher, Bailey Brewer, um, a middle school social studies teacher, Aiden Leonard, and an intervention specialist from LES, Eileen Pott. So welcome all of you. Um, we are really excited to have you here. And if we could have a round of applause for them, please.
if I were to just chime in, I'm going to say thanks for coming this evening. You're all standing, looking energetic. I appreciate it. Way to get, way to get through it. Uh, and thanks to Garth and his department. Uh, he had a bit when people are off over the summer, Garth's here all summer getting uh, the best and the brightest, and we're very excited to have all of you. But uh, kudos to you guys for being here this evening, and Garth, nice job this summer getting the, the talent that we have. I appreciate it. And on behalf of the board, thank you for being here um, tonight for this meeting coming out. I know it's a busy whirlwind time for all of you as you're getting started in the year, and so we appreciate you make, making the effort to be here tonight. We're so glad to have you in the district, and we have so many great staff members for you to can learn from, I'm sure, but we're also grateful for all the new ideas that you bring to the district, and we hope you don't hesitate to share those and help us to continue to get better as a district. So thanks for being here. Very good. Um, if there isn't any other comments from the board, I want to start saying that there is not an expectation to stay <laughs> <laughs> want you to be uh, so here. This session is going to stay for Excellent. Thank you all. I appreciate you coming aboard with our district, and I'll see a couple of you at parent night. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, next on the agenda are our student representatives to the board, and we also have two new student representatives with us. And so uh, welcome to you. We're grateful to have uh, you with us on the board this year. And hopefully CJ and Ellie have helped to have you learn the ropes a little bit and advance here. And uh, we look forward to one of the things we've done this last year, I think, in a, a way that was an improvement over previous years was to have more engagement from our students, not just sharing the reports from the buildings, but your perspectives on what's happening within the district. And so uh, we look forward to continuing to grow that um, in the coming year. And uh, with Ellie in the board office doing an internship, we're sure we're going to have an opportunity to continue to advance that. So thank you for being here tonight. And we look forward to your reports. I don't know if you probably don't have them tonight yet. Well, I don't, I don't think we do, but all I know is we have one bow tie. So that, that takes care of the reports. So, uh, welcome to our two new, uh, representatives and I'm sure CJ and Ellie will show you the ropes. And, uh, I do encourage you to make it, uh, personal when you, when you come up and do the reports and, and CJ and Ellie did a great job of that last year. So don't, don't be afraid to give us your opinion and let us know what you're thinking. And uh, we're still going to have the superintendent's council this year and work with our kids. And we're going to try and include uh, our intermediate and our middle school student leaders as well. So I look forward to getting to know you better. All right. Um, we have uh, then presentations uh, from the boosters, PTAs, and the Loveland Schools Foundation. Setters coming forward to lead this portion. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Setters. Oh, let me hit the microphone. All right. I'm Andrew Setters. I'm the uh, Director of Communications Community Engagement for Loveland City Schools. And to give you a little bit of background, over the last few years at Mr. Broadwater's urging, we've kind of worked to build even stronger relationships with the groups that uh, that I've kind of started calling our support council. These are, these are our parent-teacher organizations, our booster groups, and our foundation that really support the district and do a lot of amazing things. Is You'll hear from them. They uh, are people who give a lot of their time, a lot of their talent, a lot of volunteer effort, and raise a lot of funds to give our kids uh, more than they would otherwise get and support our students and our district in a really awesome way. We've been able to kind of forge more relationships. We've been sitting in meetings and folks have been able to kind of share volunteers and share ideas from group to group. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's made us stronger. And I, I think it was a, a great opportunity for uh, these folks to kind of come present to the board, give everyone an idea of what they do and talk about the impact that they have for our kids. So we have seven groups that we'll uh, invite up kind of one by one, and we'll start off with Lepta. If you just want to introduce yourself, and and uh, we've got your slides up on the thing. When you're when you're ready for the next slide, just yell it out. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Kelly Coco. A little bit about me. Uh, my husband and I both graduated from Loveland in 1998. 
and uh, decided to move back here with our kids when they were young so that they could all go through Loveland as well. And now I have a freshman and a sixth grader and a second grader. So I just pretty much span all across all of the buildings. Um, LEPTA, or Loveland Elementary PTA, covers Loveland Early Childhood Center, Loveland Primary School, and Loveland Elementary School. So that's basically uh, preschool all the way through fourth grade is who we serve. Uh, some of the things that we do are we provide parent volunteers throughout the year for special events. We organize meals for the teachers during conference week and teacher appreciation week so that we can really show the teachers our love when they have to stay late hours. We like to be able to give them the support that we can, go in, grab a quick meal, and get back to what they're doing. Uh, at the beginning of the year, every teacher can apply for a stipend, and we uh, give them money to basically help them set up their classroom for the year and just kind of spruce things up. We provide funding support for science enrichment days, illustrator and author visits, as well as children's theater performances throughout the buildings. Uh, some of the other things, we have after-school enrichment classes, which are super popular. And most importantly is we provide funding for all of the class field trips and their required busing. We're going to different places such as the zoo, the Newport Aquarium, Castle Skateland, several different parks uh, throughout the local counties, as well as tours of Rumpke and other random days that they go do different things. There's some examples. How we do it. All of our funding is provided by parents and supporters of the children in the district. We have general membership dues for families uh, that is $15 that provides them with the opportunity of early access to our events and our class registrations throughout the year. Our big thing is that we hold a walk-a-thon at all three school buildings in late September, early October, where we ask for donations from the families and their support circles, uh, and we give prizes to the, the top classes, the top students, and just really different incentives that we can do. Between our corporate donors and our students for Walkathon last year, we raised almost $40,000, and all of that was put to use in our schools. Uh, so if you would like to join the PTA, <laughs> there's a QR code that you can scan, and that's uh, we have a new website this year, lovelandlepta.org. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Hi, my name is Verity Simmons, and somehow Ronan made it here before I did. I had to pick my son up from high school cross country and take him home and make it here, but <laughs> he runs faster, apparently. <laughs> um, so I am here uh, representing the uh, middle and intermediate school PTSA. Um, we have um, a lot of similar things that, that LEPTA does. We just age ourselves up, but one of the differences is that we try really hard to focus on the emotional health and wellness of our students. This is a very unique time in their lives and in the lives of their families <laughs> um, as we try to figure out how to uh, support kindly and with collaboration <laughs> um, some people who are trying to assert their independence. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> We, uh, we focus a lot on, on trying to do that. We have done um, things in the past. Last year, we had uh, Dr. Harris come from uh, Children's Hospital, and she did a Q&A on mental health, which was really wonderful. We've had um, other presentations. We've had newsletters that go out, um, drawing on experts um, in, in the field of adolescent development and um, mental and emotional health and wellness. Um, so I'm going to, just because we're talking about that this year, um, we are doing, focusing on that same thing, but we have a very exciting opportunity on September 10th. Um, it's on there for those of you who are visual learners. On September 10th at 6.30 p.m. in the LMS auditorium, we have Nick Jackson coming to present to families and the community. Um, he will be visiting with uh, all four grade levels at LIS and LMS during the school day and doing a, a, a version of his I Am Speak Love presentation, um, focusing on Loveland goals specifically, and they're calling that Tigering Up. So he'll give those presentations specific to the developmental appropriateness of, of each one of those age groups. 
and then on September 10th to parents and community. So that's a very exciting opportunity for us to have that. Um, and that was something that the Mint PTSA was able to do through a very generous silent donation. Um, so we're very excited to have that opportunity. Um, we also do teacher grants. Um, we allow every teacher, however many choose to, to apply for a grant. And our grants are um, slightly more substantial than than LEP does because we don't provide to every teacher. We ask the teachers who are interested um, to apply. Um, last year, a really cool uh, grant that we did or that we supported um, was for the sixth grade ELA classes um, from the Nancy and David Wolf Holocaust and Humanity Center. They rented um, a curriculum where they had nine suitcases from um, survivors or liberators from the Holocaust. And the kids had the opportunity to look through those suitcases and different advanced ELA did things differently than the, the typical ELA. Um, and they were able to do different presentations and to learn and to, to investigate what these things were. My son was in sixth grade last year and he had to use Google Translate to figure out what a document was even saying. Um, so it was a very cool opportunity to to bring some very real life um, situations. We provide things, um, different um, subscriptions to uh, educational websites or different resources that, that teachers want. These are not consumable resources. They are things that will continue to survive year to year. Um, so that's the focus of, of those uh, grants. Um, we also are supplementing um, the field trips, class incentives, the school incentive activities, um, and Camp Kern, so that every child, regardless of ability to pay, is able to go. Um, and so that's, that's where a good chunk of our money goes. We were just looking at our budget, and um, that is, it's a third of our budget. Um, is, is going to supporting and making sure that all kids have the opportunity to participate in all of these activities. Um, we provide hospitality dinners and a really fun one. If your kids are, have ever been in middle school, you might have heard, we do hot chocolate day. That's over 1,200 cups of hot chocolate. It's quite the undertaking. Um, my car has been full of 10 gallon jugs of hot chocolate coming to school. I just like nobody break in front of me. <laughs> um, so it's it's really fun and you're never quite sure, you know, when you offer something special, how kids are going to react. And we've been really, really pleased. So if you have a middle or intermediate school kid, know that they actually were all very polite um, and they, they waited and they said thank you. And so, you know, it's really nice to see those types of things. Um, every year we fund the new family uh, welcome brunch. Uh, so students who are coming in new, the schools put on the, the tours for them and then we provide the brunch um, activities for them. Um, conference dinners, that's, you've heard of that. Ooh, and we do year-end class parties. So there's the Grand Sands, year-end class party for the eighth graders. That's completely funded by the Mint PTSA. The sixth grade last day of school lunch, completely funded by the Mint PTSA. And then we supplement um, fifth, oh no, we do fifth grade donuts. And then we give, that's sixth grade. <laughs> and then um, seventh grade, we just, we supplement, we give them money and they usually use it for Kona ice. Um, so we're going to continue doing those kinds of things that we've always done. Oh, good. The pictures are there. Fantastic. Reminded me that we do science day every year. We have over 30 volunteers from the community um, in various um, areas of science and technology who come in and do presentations to the uh, fifth and sixth graders. They rotate through usually about five or six um, presentations that they, they get to have. We have... Um, high school clubs that come and present as well. Many of them are parents. Some of them are not parents at all, just amazing people who continue to come back year after year because they want to help promote um, science and, and kids enjoying and learning. So there's the Reds Hall of Fame was a field trip that the sixth graders went on. I think it was sixth graders. <laughs> um, Holocaust and Humanity Center, that was the, um, the suitcase project, the teacher grant, and then there's our sixth grade lunch. So kudos to 
all of the lunch staff who does that every day <laughs> because hot chocolate day and sixth grade lunch just about wipes us out and it's twice a year. So um, yeah, we if you'd like to join the Mint PTSA, you can do that too, lovelandmintptsa.org. It's $15. Um, we are going to be trying something new this year with our fundraiser. Um, and so we will be issuing that out, uh, rolling that out in September and October. We're actually going to roll it out at our uh, Nick Jackson presentation. Um, and we're going to let people donate to categories that speak to them. So if you are really motivated to want to make sure that we have emotional health and wellness presentations, then donate your money to that. You want to make sure that um, we continue to fund Science Day, donate your money to that. Um, so we're trying to let people donate with their heart, let us know what's important to them, and then we can look to rearrange our budget accordingly so that we can be supporting what our, what our people feel is important. Any questions? That's a good Hi there, I'm Tara Hamilton. I'm here representing the Loveland High School PTO. Um, I have a mom in the district. I have a 10th grader and an 8th grader now this year. So um, basically, the just like the other um, organizations, our PTO um, is there to support the students and staff of the high school. Um, we do that. Okay, that is oh, great. Okay. Um, we do that by providing the fall dinner at conference lunch. We do the, um, or dinner, excuse me. Um, last year it was um, a chili cook-off. We think we might do that again this year because it was quite a hit. Um, we do the staff appreciation lunch during the May uh, teacher appreciation week. Um, we've done this past year, we did it two different times. We do treat carts where we take a little cart and we give a survey at the beginning of the year to teachers and staff members see what kind of treats and things and gift cards that they like. And then we um, ask our parents to help support that. And then we take the card around during the morning time and give everyone a little chance to grab a treat that they enjoy. Um, so that's been a big hit. Uh, we've done a hot beverage day and then other little goodies throughout the year. Um, our big uh, thing that we do as the high school PTO is we take care of the after prom for the kids. This past year, there were about 150 kids who were safe after prom and had a really fun, exciting, good time. Um, we also do teacher grants as well. We did about $700 in teacher grants this past year. Um, we are able to do that not only by our membership, which is very, very low right now. Um, <laughs> it's only like $5. Um, so everyone should join. Um, and then we also, on top of that, we get donations. So this past year, we had about $4,300 given to us by parents, as well as extra additional food items we asked for and lots of different gift cards. Um, our goals for this year is we'd like to increase our numbers for after prom. Anybody wants to come with some good ideas or some great <laughs> things that we could um, add to that, that would be exciting for us. Um, so we're really wanting to increase our after prom numbers. Um, and then we're looking to add an additional fundraiser to support our efforts um, for this year. So any questions on high school? There's the after prom. Thank you. Thank you. I am Meredith DeWitt. I am with Loveland Athletic Boosters. I have two kids that have already gone through the school district, and then I have a sophomore also, so my time is dwindling. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, LAB, our goals are to support the student athletes, whether it's um, through the athletic department or helping them pay for their pay to play fees. We make sure that there is no child or high school kid or middle school kid that uh, cannot play sports due to funding. Um, we make sure that the, every pay to play is taken care of if they can't afford it. Um, my favorite thing that we do is organize, organize the homecoming parade, which is September 19th this year. Um, we take care of all of that. Um, we help pay for the meet the team shirts that are given to every athlete. Um, oh, did I? No, okay. Um, meet the team shirts that they wear for meet the team nights, uh, fall, winter, and spring. Um, we pay for ECC champ shirts given to all athletes that, um, won, we won the all sports trophy this year, which is a huge deal for little Loveland compared to some of the D1 schools to, um, win all sports trophy. It's very big deal. So we got t-shirts for all of them. 
Um, we pay $16,400 a year for Huddle. If you aren't familiar with what Huddle is, it's um, filming of all the games so then they can go back and watch their plays. Uh, we do that for every sport, not just football, basketball, the big ones. Um, we handed out last year $19,000 in scholarships. Uh, we hosted senior dinners at Tony's, which we changed last year, where um, the team has to have 60% in membership in order for us to send the seniors to dinner. Um, just like everything, the dinners at Tony's have gotten super expensive for us. Um, and that's a nice to do, not a need to do. So um, with membership being one of our biggest fundraisers, we said, look, if you want a senior dinner, we need to at least have 60% of your team members of the boosters. Um, and that did work out for us. We really did get a lot more parents to join. Um, with that, our other fundraisers are Tiger Ball and then um, the concession stands, we profit from all of that. That's where we get majority of our money from. Um, we gave $1,600 for senior mom flowers that every senior mom gets on senior night when they're walking their child out on that night. And then um, last year we gave $50,000 for facility upgrades to the athletic department. And I took a check over to the athletic department today for the same exact amount. So we are doing everything we can to help facilities upgrade what we need to get upgraded, soft, or softball, baseball uh, scoreboards. Um, we bought a scores table last year, um, just trying to make our facilities look as good as everyone else's. So um, our 24, 25 goals are to continue what we've been doing. Um, we'd like to hopefully every year give at least $50,000, if not more, to the athletic department. Um, and then investing in the baseball and softball scoreboards. And then um, as you see, our financial impact is usually between 90 and 100 a year, um, which we get from concessions, Tiger Ball membership, and mulch sale, but we might be getting rid of mulch sale. So that's it. If you guys have any questions, uh, reach out to us. We're all, um, all our board members on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm James Frazier. I am the president of the Loveland Performing Arts Boosters, formerly the Loveland Music Boosters, which can kind of tell you our story starting from last August. Um, our current board was all nominated and voted in last August. Um, we basically had to do a reboot of the boosters program. Um, primarily, we were at that point just primarily show choir parents. Um, to this point, um, we have made some extraordinary strides. Uh, again, we have renamed ourselves the Performing Arts Boosters. We have gathered uh, supporters from now the marching band, from the orchestra, from drama. We've added drama to the Performing Arts Boosters. Um, we've gotten a lot of support from the, uh, um, from the surrounding Loveland area. Um, so basically, we have done a lot of um, just building a team that we didn't have prior to um, last August. So we have um, basically completed our reorganization and certification of Loving Love and Performing Arts Booters by November of 2023. So we've only really been an organization back in since uh, November. We've added seats to the, to the board representing IT and social media. We have five corporate sponsors for this last year, um, amounting up to 7,000. And we've already gotten commitments for over 10,000 this year, just starting. So we're, uh, we're jumping right in there. Um, we make a contribution uh, every year, $75 for each member of the show choir, totaling for $18,000 this last year. Um, we're gonna up that to $100 per student um, for show choir and marching band. So which will double probably close to 22,000 will be the donation for this year. Um, we have bought the new sound system for the middle school choir and orchestra. Um, and we have a new rolling mount for a donated grand piano that was about $2,000. Uh, we bought a new operating system for our, um, our, our website so that we can get all the departments all on the same page, all on the same table. So all our financials, all our communications and everything can go through one place. 
so we can all work together. Um, we have also worked with a company, Best. Um, they're the ones that provide security and um, ticketing and stuff for sporting events in Cincinnati, like the Bengals and um, FCC. Um, we have secured over $10,000 in funding from them, and we have probably um, an ability to get over $25,000 this year from them, just from the Bengals games. Um, we are building, uh, again, uh, relationships with uh, companies in Loveland. Um, Cappies, uh, we've had three events over the summer, and we've also gained a big, um, with Ace Hardware, has joined in with the Loveland Music Boosters. Um, one thing I'd like to put out to all the booster groups, um, if you are looking for fundraising, um, we can partner you with you guys through BEST. Um, basically, you guys can earn like $100 per member if that could volunteer with us. Um, and you guys can work the Bengals games or you can work um, FCC games. You can work Cincinnati basketball games, football games. So if you guys are interested, you can come talk to us or contact me through the Music Boosters website or you can contact me directly um, and we can uh, all work together to build our program and your all's program. Thank you very much. All right, hello, my name is John Rasmussen. I'm representing the uh, Loveland Robotics Boosters. I'm a VP in the organization. But for those of you who have seen me around for a while, I've uh, been a mentor for the high school FTC teams for the last uh, 10 years now, or roughly 10 years, and some of the other programs within the, in the thing. Unlike uh, some others, my kids have all graduated out, but my passion for the robotics and what it does for our students um, uh, continues on for a little while. <laughs> I've now retired. Um, so we've got the highlights up there. So from some of the highlights from the past year, we've had hosted three uh, uh, tournaments. So a VEX tournament, that's our sixth annual one um, that's had 48 teams to, uh, attending. We also host an FLL disc uh, challenge. So if you're not familiar with all the things, VEX runs seventh, eighth, and then the high school. FLL is first Lego league challenge, which is the um, fourth through eighth grade. They use Lego programs, Lego robotics. Uh, so that's more the uh, younger kids, the fourth through eighth, and we run the district tournament. So they have a qualifying district and the qualifiers from district go to state. And pretty much every year we have somebody that comes to our district that ends up going on to Worlds or one of the top uh, programs here in the US. And then uh, we also host the FL Explore Festival, which is first Lego League, but for the kindergarten through fourth grade, so that younger group. So we kind of cover all the way through um, with our, our tournaments. And you can see that we've been hosting them for all three of them for the last three years and some for as long as six. To do things like this, well, what, what do we got? We've got 88 teams that all participate and that we, uh, that we help part uh, com compete. What you also have is you've got a lot of volunteers that are required to do these things. So the top two, the VEX and the FL Challenge, take about 70 to 80 volunteers per event. And the FL Explorer is probably a little less, maybe about 25 to 30. But you're looking at about 200 or so volunteers to run these, um, these different tournaments. Other highlights for this past year, the First Tech Challenge or FTC teams, those are the um, teams that have been around for about 10 years now. Um, some, I think, are... One's been around 11 or 12, but uh, those, both of those teams qualified yet again for the Ohio State uh, Championship. So uh, nine years in a row, both teams have qualified. For perspective, about 30% of the teams each year qualify. So the fact that we've had both teams qualified nine years in a row, and those up in the northern part of the state referred to us as a powerhouse is kind of fun. <laughs> um, at that competition, we had both of our teams win two of the top awards. They give out seven judged awards, and our teams won two of them. Um, so both teams came home with one. So that's a pretty proud uh, um, legacy that we've got going on here. And we'll continue, excuse me, continue that on as we carry forward. We also had one of the top um, three uh, robotic students in the state. So every year they do the competition and the um, judging and whatever else for the students in the state for sophomores and junior years. And Jamie Brown, who's now senior, she uh, are they um, 
uh, qualified and then went on to the world's program to see, you know, to try and uh, be a dean's list is what they call it at the, uh, at the national level. Um, We've had one first Lego League challenge team that went to the Ohio State Championships, and we had three middle school VEX teams advance to the middle school VEX Championships this past year. So overall, a very successful year. Um, our goals for the next year, uh, continue the robotics program in the area. We're gonna continue hosting the three tournaments. Um, what I invite all of you, if you'd like to, uh, to participate in them as volunteers, and particularly judging. What I've, I'll be the judge advisor pretty much for all three of those. Um, I have done judge advising across the tri-state area and Kentucky, Milford, they've all done where members of the board wanna find out more about what's really happening in these robotics programs. Uh, so going and becoming a judge for a day is, is a great way to do that. And I've had administration as well as um, board members come to multiple events not in Loveland, but in other areas. So open invitation. Thank you. Um, we also support the Loveland Robotics uh, teams with mentors and financial support. And I think that's, yeah, that's down below. Overall, we have 152 students involved K through 12, over $20,000 we've gotten in sponsorships, corporate and, and other sponsorships. And then the 6,800 that's in uh, fundraising and things like that. You may have heard of uh, Breakfast with the Bots. That's one of our big fundraisers for the year. Um, here's some photos from the different uh, tournaments that we've run, um, including the LMS VEX team at state. Do we have any other pictures? There we go. And then FL Explore teams, the FTC high school teams at state, and then the, the VEX tournament there. Um, let's see. So as with others, we have a, if you'd like to join the boosters program, we have a $25 fee. Um, and I think it's probably up on our website or something. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. still new to that. Okay, so I don't know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. Hi there, I'm Tara Hamilton again. Still a mom. <laughs> still a mom in the district. That's right, that's right. Should I switch? Yeah. Um, hi there. Um, I. I'm kind of curious, how many people have heard of the Loveland Schools Foundation? That's good, it's getting, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so the Loveland Schools Foundation has actually been in existence since about 2000. Um, there was a group that held a huge reunion and then had a whole bunch of money that they had and they had to figure out what to do with it. So they had this great idea of developing a foundation. Since then, they have had three um, main goals that they've wanted to do. Um, the one is they wanted to offer teacher grants. We're now calling them staff grants because we'd like to um, have anybody, you know, in the staff that you can be a nurse, you could be whatever and, you know, get that grant. Um, so they've offered staff grants, they've offered scholarships for graduating seniors, and then they've also um, done almost 23 years of honoring distinguished alumni each year. Um, those are three, the th still three of the three things that we would like to continue on with the Loveland Schools Foundation. Within the past year, under Mr. Broadwater's suggestion and urgence, we might say, um, he has said, we can take our foundation. There are other districts that have foundations that have over a million dollar endowments and other districts that are doing great things with our foundation, and we can get ours there. Um, it's just getting hands on it and getting people involved with it. So um, in the past year, we have a lot more. We have about uh, nine new board members. Um, we've got our new logo there. We have our new um, website up and running. We have a Facebook page up and running. Um, lots of new things we've done this past year in order to um, gain visibility, gain our fundraising, gain our donation base is what we're focusing on right now. Um, this past year, we not only have we done a new logo and rebranded, we um, had a fundraiser at Cappy's. And we just recently had an open house fundraiser to kind of kick off our rebrand um, at Mrs. Mingan's house, um, which was a huge success for us. We raised almost 19 grand um, just in that one open house fundraiser, kind of giving us all this boost of we've got this, we can do this. There's another um, revenue stream that we can work here with with our community. Um, our goals um, for this year are to continue to promote our organization throughout our community 
like we're saying, increase our visibility, get our name out there, discuss what we're about, um, boost our fundraising efforts and donation base. Um, we're also trying to um, connect with our alumni more, get those alumni emails as soon as they graduate and keep them involved um, and in all of the events and other things that we have going on. This past year, we were able to give about $4,800 in teacher grants, and we were able to give um, uh, almost 30 grand in senior scholarships awarded. There's many different um, scholarships. One uh, example is the new one is the um, Mr. Kenyon Memorial Scholarship. Um, so a lot of different scholarships come through the Loveland Schools Foundation. And with that, we are able to award those graduating seniors that amount of money. Um, we're hoping to do more in the future. We're hoping to give more scholarships. We're hoping to give more staff grants. Um, and we're excited for um, eventually we will be doing a huge event that will honor distinguished alumni. So that will be coming as well. Any questions for Loveland Schools Foundation? Okay, thank you. Oh, that's please. So you can donate today. You can, <laughs> you can volunteer with us. Get your little phones out with your QR code and please, we would love to have um, help. That's um, the only way we can get our message out here is the more hands that we have involved. So thank you. And I'll just say thank you to everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you for all the work that you do for our kids day in and day out. These are, I mean, I I had a pretty good idea of what you guys were doing, but just to see it all on the page and see ten thousand dollars here, a hundred thousand dollars there, fifty thousand dollars, it's 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 amazing what you all are able to accomplish and achieve for our students. So thank you so much. Just to kind of echo what Mr. Setter says, but also uh, in a couple minutes, I'm going to go over a, a great report card and I'm going to show the board all the good stuff. And none of that good stuff happens without the support that we have of our students and our staff. You'd be amazed uh, how much it helps the staff to see a rolling cart come around with goodies. It means they're appreciated. They work hard. Our staff works very hard and all of you work very hard for our staff and our kids. And I appreciate it very, very much. We had in our strategic vision, which we did three years ago, uh, the community was pushing us to find alternative funding. This is a great source of alternative funding that the district does not have to pay, uh, as well as the foundation was also in the strategic vision, take a, a great foundation and just re-energize it and just uh, continue to do good things for kids. So I'd say thank you very much for, I don't, I don't know all the time you put in, but I know you put a lot of time in and, and I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Now, on behalf of the board, I want to say thank you as well. I was thinking at convocation the other day, I was talking to the staff about how one of our goals is always have a community of learning, that this isn't simply about providing the education and saying, here, our kids take care of them, but we want to be a community that gathers around and supports that whole learning effort. And those could be empty words if it weren't for the organizations that you all put in place and have all of the efforts that you do that we can support and that we can come alongside of as parents and as, as community members. And so thank you for all the hours that you put in. It's so clear as you all talk about this, how much you think about these things and how careful you are in making sure that you're using the funds and trusted you in the best way to make the, the largest impact you can for the district. Uh, so thank you for the work that you do and for all of the effort that you put into these organizations. All right. I'm just going to echo that really quick. So Meredith, you don't get off you don't get off the hook when your kids all graduate. Um, most of the folks in the room know that we've had four kids graduate, and they, at one point or another, they've all been impacted by the PTA, the PTO, the booster organizations. And so it's really, it's I say it's always the the people that are the magic of any organization, and that it's not just the people that work inside the four walls of our schools. It's our entire community, like Jonathan said. So it's I appreciate all of you helping us develop, you know, young adults that are curious about what they like to do, what problems they like to to solve, what you know, activities and hobbies they like to develop, because it's it truly makes an impact into you know our alumni that are that are coming out of the the school district. So thank you. All right, well, if you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, we are <laughs> glad to have you with us if you want to go now. Great. I do have an excellent superintendent update coming uh, if you would like to stay. <laughs> <laughs>
CJ thought about sitting back down. Yeah. <laughs> no. I made the executive decision. They don't want us in it. She's blowing her nose. <laughs> Just you, Terry. Come on. Or our... She'll start doing flips for you in the room. Yeah. Mike, are you doing? You just keep digging yourself in. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. He was so eager to get to him. It was <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Great. Well, that was yeah. It's a little more empty and Monday night, but uh, um, but that was great to have all of those folks here. It really is just so impressive to hear all that they had to share. All right. Well, moving on then, administrator reports that we do have one uh, report that's in the board docs there, um, hearing about a lot of the good things that are happening in the classroom in terms of instruction. And we'll hear a little more about that from Mr. Broadwater in a minute. Uh, board president report. Jonathan, just one thing on the that on the teaching and learning report, I appreciate the new um, or the updated student services page that talks about support for parents, support for students, um, our counselor support, our school psych, and that I just think the page was really well done and it's a helpful resource for parents, so students, so I just want to say thank you for, for that being Excellent. updated. Thanks for highlighting that. <laughs> 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 no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Um, so a few things uh, for board president report. Uh, one is a we have a Great Oaks report from Kathy Lorenz. Uh, school is now in session on all four campuses of Great Oaks, as well as satellite programs in many of the lo local districts served by Great Oaks. Uh, one of the new programs highlighted is the Aviation Exploration Program at Live Oaks, available to Loveland students. Um, and I'm not sure if she has them here or not, but there's Great Oaks Next Ready uh, copy and a portrait of a Great Oaks student that if they're, yes, they are here. Okay. Um, so board members have those uh, to uh, check out, and I'm sure those are available probably on the website if uh, anyone listening wants to, uh, to check those out. Um, also, uh, it was mentioned before that uh, Lynn had hosted the foundation's uh, kickoff event. I want to thank uh, Lynn for doing that and for all of her leadership and helping the, the foundation get going. And uh, appreciate everyone that came out to be a part of that event. And it really was a great way to, to get things started there. Um, we uh, had a great time at convocation. There were uh, three of us that were there. Um, for the convocation and it's so exciting to see all of the the new folks and all of the old folks all coming together and excited to kick off a year uh, the kids that were there to begin it is always so important to remind everyone that this is about the kids and so um, always excited to be a part of that event each year um, one of the things that we talked about last year that I want to bring to the board's attention we had an email you all probably saw that about the logo and its use and we talked some about that last year but we did not come to any conclusions about that last year and so as i look at it i think there are three questions that we want to answer when we can put on an upcoming agenda um, one is whether or not we want to pursue the trademark of the the logo because i don't think we've initiated that at all right andrew but, so that would be one do we want to pursue a trademark of the tiger paw um, and then Two, do we want some kind of an agreement that uh, people would sign in order to use the Tiger Paw so that we make sure we feel good about the, the usage of the Tiger Paw with whoever might be using that? And then three, do we want to seek any remuneration for the usage of that? Uh, you see some documents at your place as well. Um, these were examples of potential agreements that we could use that uh, uh, Gary Sidronsky 
um, provided for us, our attorney. Um, so you can check those out and then we'll, um, maybe we can do that at our next work session, have some more discussion about that and uh, think about how we want to, to move forward. Um, my thought is to reply to the person that uh, inquired about it this time, since we're not requiring agreements with anyone else at this point, that uh, to tell him that he can have conditional approval to use it uh, for now. And I, we saw what he was using it for. It's certainly all supportive of our kids and families and uh, making nice looking products for um, to highlight what's going on in Loveland. So um, is that okay with everyone to, to communicate with him conditional approval and then we'll work on a policy moving forward? Dr. Policy leading the way. <laughs> All right, great. All right, I think that's it for me. Any other board members have anything you want to share from any committees or anything that you're doing? We had a student experience committee and everything's off to a good start with our staff, with our professional development these last few days and then our convocation. Um, the teachers here uh, for the science of reading are doing very well with completing the requirements and it's due by June 25th or June of 20, 2025. Um, we're looking forward to the science and interve intervention uh, fair this year. So that's an exciting meeting. All right. Dr. Berta, I apologize for missing that. My mother-in-law shattered her femur and I've been her caretaker because I couldn't leave her today. <laughs> I mean, I left her now, but I got a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, then we'll move on to uh, the superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, just right out of the gate, uh, letting the board know we had a great start to school and a uh, few snafus here and there, which is kind of why we have a rolling start where we have half the half our students the first day and the, the other half the second day, and then LECC for our kindergarten students. Uh, there are four days where... Uh, we're able to do our KR, our kinder, kindergarten reading assessments and talking to the staff there, walking through LECC. I saw many of our teacher, teachers working with each other to get our kids assessed and take care of our kids and uh, had one of our teachers say that she believed it put her about two weeks ahead of what she normally does simply because they had a lot more one-on-one -on -one to get the kindergarten kids ready to go, but also assess their reading, which is the biggest part of what we do in kindergarten. So I just wanna say thanks to the board for supporting us in doing that. Uh, it's not every district that does it, but I think it, it works out pretty well for us uh, and our kids and our staff. So thank you. Uh, we have tomorrow, we have a state uh, funding committee meeting. If you recall board, we are in with a uh, subcommittee with the Alliance, which is the group of uh, pretty high performing districts. And uh, um, I would say the wealthier districts that have interest in what the state funding model can be uh, and how we can adjust it. So I'm excited to see where that leads. We have about 20 other districts. Uh, Mr. SB, Mrs. Mangan, Mr. Eilert are going to be part of that. And Mr. Setters is going to go as well. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. But uh, in a short amount of time, we've made a little bit of noise at the state level and uh, people are kind of listening. So we'll see what that amounts to. And uh, hopefully it helps our community. The uh, part I was going to end with was what I did at Convocation. Three of you were there, which I appreciate. The other two, I'll give you the good news we had. I'm going to have to peek over my shoulder. But what we did, uh, the 22-23 report card, um, we really have not dug into. The comparables come out in September. So 23-24 report card next month. We'll have more comparables that I'll be happy to share. Uh, but Mr. Lee dug into some of our comparables, and uh, I think it was good to share with our staff and let them know just, just how good we are. I mean, we, our staff works very, very hard, and uh, all of the little things that get done in the classroom add up to what we do academically. And so we had a 4.607 overall rating. If you recall, it's five stars, so 4.607 out of five, which is pretty good. In fact, it was the 10th highest score in the state of Ohio out of 607 districts. So that's pretty good. Uh, that puts you in the top 2%. And uh, I think here in Loveland, I would say you get a pretty good bang for your buck. I, I think that's it when you look at academics uh, and, and how we take care of kids. The categories, achievement, gap closing, value add, early literacy. The reason we had a 4.607 is we received a four in the early early literacy category. If you recall, the board uh, was nice enough for, to allow us to use the, the ESSER funds or COVID cash 
and uh, get reading intervention specialists at our lower levels, which is, is very, very important. And so we uh, really stressed the early literacy last year. We had the highest score of any Claremont County School District that serves uh, students. We had the fourth highest score in Hamilton County. If you look at Madeira, Marymount, and Wyoming, you would notice they're fairly small districts. We're a pretty large district. Uh, so we're very proud of the fact that we're fourth in Hamilton County. Uh, we had the fourth highest score in Region 13 with those four counties. We had the fourth highest score of all the large districts in Ohio, fourth overall in all the large districts, which we categorized as over 4,000. So that is the 22-23 report card. Uh, and I always look, like looking at comparables. It kind of lets us know how we're doing, right? And uh, I would say we're doing pretty well. And uh, for 20, this year, 23, or last year, this year's report card, 23-24, we received a five in every single category. So our overall score is going to be five, which means nobody's going to beat us. <laughs> uh, and again, I would thank the board. The early literacy, in my mind, is all the hard work our teachers do and those intervention specialists and among the classroom teachers as well. Uh, and we're just all very, very proud of our teachers and our staff for, for all the hard work they do uh, in getting to that. The next slide that I'll show, and then this will be my, uh, well, I got one more after this. The, the top two issues when we had town halls last year was the learning pathway and the mental health. When you look at learning pathways, uh, we were able to adjust some of our administrative positions to where we now have a director of learning pathways. You will see other school districts that have done the same thing. Uh, and it really is, how are we going to build that category and make it a little bit more robust for our kids? We've already got a very robust program. Uh, and if the board's not aware, that's going to be the fifth category that's going to be on the report card starting next year. So we're, we're trying to get ahead of the game there and make sure, A, we're, we're doing great things for kids, and B, we're documenting it properly. And so uh, hopefully that works out for us. The mental health part, uh, you, you heard some of our, uh, our parents talking about that. We were able to, in adjusting some of our school psychologists, we now have school psychologists that are not traveling. We had a couple that were traveling to different buildings, which you know if you're traveling, you're losing some time with kids. So we were able to make sure that we have a de dedicated school psychologist at our intermediate and at our middle schools, which is very, very important. We also were able to add uh, a 0.5 support at our elementary to help and uh, primary to help out with that. So the two ideas we got in the town halls, I believe we, we addressed, we'll continue to look at that. The strategic changes, I wanted to let our staff know, so I'll let everybody know here. Uh, number one, the purchase of 16 acres, the board and uh, the district worked very, very hard to uh, achieve the fact that we were able to purchase. And I think number one, it gives us an idea of how we wanna look to the future, whether it be a building, whether it be uh, uh, something to do with environmental science, whatever it may be, it allows us to now take time and develop what we want to do with that. Uh, and it's also, as you know, to buy 16 acres in Loveland's pretty tough. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but we are obviously going to take our time to determine what, what that means. Our uh, start date for kindergarten, we moved the birthday from August 1st to September 30th, which for four years old, four year olds, two months is a lot. That's a lot of time. And so we looked at a lot of the studies and our teachers at the lower levels had been urging this. So the board was uh, nice enough to approve that we change that birth date start time. And uh, so we were able to do that. Next, we have the Loveland Schools Foundation. We uh, definitely re-energize. When I say we, I mean Mrs. Mangan and everybody that's working so very, very hard. We have a board that uh, I'm excited to, to go to meetings and see where this is going to go. Uh, and I appreciate all the hard work on the foundation. And the last two, the Leadership Academy to the board. We have about, I believe it's 20 teachers. We have at least a representative from each building that we're going to develop. A, their leadership, but B, get to know them and see where do they want to go as a staff when it comes to professional development. Uh, there's always going to be professional development that we are going to direct because we have to, but we would like to have uh, voice and choice when it comes to some professional development and let our leaders of our buildings determine what that is. So, And then we have 
uh, an AI, AI Institute is uh, going to start as well. I think we have about 15 teachers that have signed up for that to see what, we're, what in the world we're going to do with AI and see where that's going. Uh, I know a lot of us use it when we're writing things, but what's that mean for kids and how are we going to make sure our students are using it appropriately? And then the last thing, the Science and Innovation Expo with Mrs. Jernick mentioned is Adam Samuels and uh, Stacy Park have been working hard. If you recall, we used to do a showcase in October where we kind of showcased everything. Uh, in in uh, my first couple of years, I, I always felt like we should have some science, a science fair. And so Adam has been uh, nice enough to jump in there and work with our science teachers. And uh, the first year is always, always uh, figuring out where it's going, but I think it, our kids will have fun, our students will learn. Uh, and I think it's but you look at what we do in robotics. We we should have science and innovation, and we should be showing showing what we do because we do a lot. So the last slide I have up there, uh, Tara Hamilton mentioned Linda Slusher. I just want to give her a little bit of a shout out. She is somebody who's Loveland through and through. She went to Loveland High School. She graduated in 1960, and I always love these pictures. But uh, she was a teacher and librarian at the middle school. She worked at the high school. Uh, she was a member of the foundation from 2000 to 2002, and then the executive director for quite a while. And so we recognized her at our convocation, and she is the first recipient of the Distinguished Faculty Award that will go up in the high school hall there. Uh, and we'll just hopefully continue that as we recognize our faculty. So with that, I uh, will end my superintendent update and say, oh, last thing I was going to mention, the water fountains just left Texas and they're on their way. So uh, we will, we're working on getting those installed hopefully soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Broadwater. Any questions, comments, the superintendent's report? One thing I was thinking, you said there were very <laughs> few uh, kindergarten families, right? They requested the, the um, whatever waiver, the waiver. Of the date for the first year. So yeah. it's good that says that the community's absorbing this well and right right now and it, it they, the community has been great uh in many ways i've, I've had a couple parents say it was we're they, they were glad we made the decision for them so uh overall it's been received very very well right <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was some, when I said start date, uh, it really is, all, the state of Ohio gives you two dates that you can uh, use as a birth date for the students. In other words, you can either choose August 1st or September 30th. I don't know why it's only those two dates, but it is. We had been operating on August, uh, yeah, August 1st. So when you look at, uh, no, no, opposite. We have been working on September 30th. So those students born in August and September that were still four-year-olds were able to enroll in kindergarten. So we have moved it to August 1st. So therefore the students cut off is August 1st. So those uh, children that were born in August and September starting next year will no longer qualify to start kindergarten. It's a lot harder to explain than it should be, but that, that's what it is. <laughs> so we moved from September 30th. We uh, wanted, wanted to make sure that the cutoff was such that uh, a four-year-old, the studies will show if they wait a year and start when they're five, uh, you're going to have less reading interventions, and therefore you're going to be able to spend a little bit more time with each student. And uh, so thank you, Garth. Did that, did that do it? Okay, thanks. <laughs> and let me just, I'll just chime in from the board perspective, because we discussed this previously, was um, some of the keys for ensuring that we have the time to devote to all of the kids is making sure that they're as prepared as possible coming in. And looking at four-year-olds, that was the group of kids who was the least prepared because they were the youngest. Um, but also in realization that it could have been problematic for families, we made sure to, to phase that in over a year. And I think I heard you mention it, but I don't know that I heard it in a, a final number. How many people asked for waivers this year? Do we know that? I do not know. I, I can check on that. And uh, 
I, I know of two conversations that our principal Matt Patterson had with families, so I, I can look, I can ask him. And, and just to, to follow up on that, I think it's important to ensure that, and, and I think we've done that as well as we can, that people next year aren't surprised by the fact that the cutoff date has changed. We've right. given them 18 months of knowledge of that change. Right. And it felt in January is when we made the change. So it just felt that to be fair to the families, that's pretty quick if you're trying to figure out child care. So we gave that transition year. I can tell you the one conversation I had with the first grade teacher, um, she had probably out of her 24 students, about eight that were receiving reading intervention. Be and, and the majority of them were the younger students. Uh, and so to me, that was evidence enough that you know, it probably would, would help us with the reading uh, if we do that. And you'll see a, a lot of the districts are starting to move to that simply because in, in a lot of ways it helps parents make a decision that is hard to make, so. Excellent, other questions for Mr. Broadwater? One thing I just wanna say is a thank you to you for your leadership on the school funding piece. And it really is uh, impressive how much traction we've been able to get in a short amount of time. And, um, and your leadership has certainly been critical in making that happen. And so thank you for taking the reins on that. All right, uh, moving on then to uh, 5.2, first read of the work-based learning student engagement seal. And I'm guessing Dr. Puerta, no. no. Hey, 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 is this your first <laughs> first time? Uh... All right, excellent. I'm Brian Lee, a director of Learning Pathways. Very happy to be uh, part of the Loveland City School District and uh, really appreciate the warm welcome I've received from everyone uh, so far. And so what we're talking about tonight, uh, as you said, is first read of an amendment, proposed amendment to um, policy IKF-R, which I know you all know off the top of your heads. Uh, IKF-R is about graduation requirements. Um, and uh, as you recall, there is a readiness component to graduation requirements uh, that requires our seniors to earn two graduation seals um, out of a possible 12. Three of those seals are locally defined. And so we have a policy that um, defines what uh, those three are. So what we are proposing is that for the student engagement seal, uh, which is a seal that indicates that students have, have been positively engaged in the school community, that we add a component to that, uh, which is the work-based learning through Loveland Tiger Pathways. Uh, it would be a minimum of 60 hours through any of the, the umbrella of, of pathways that we offer, whether it's job shadowing, internships, pre-apprenticeships, or work study. And so um, what would not change is that students would still have to meet two of the criteria um, in order to earn that student engagement seal. We'd be talking about just adding work-based learning as one of those criteria. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Questions? Great. I think it's a great addition. Thanks for bringing that. Yep. All right. Thank you for your report. Uh, well done for your first time. All right. Thank you. We'll give you about a 4.84 right. on the first report. Wow, that's so, you know, a, that's great. Yeah. Take it. Garth's, Garth's never gone above a three. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't I don't believe that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed we didn't have any questions for Mr. Lee there. We know, yeah. had a chance to grill him a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah. On that note, here comes your two and a half out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Garth. <laughs> <laughs> and next on the agenda is our human resource. Somebody else is at a 2.5 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Jonathan. Hello. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're ready for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, never had a beginning of a HR board report like this before, but <laughs> it's the first time for everything. Um, there are a couple of late additions to the agenda. You will notice that those are highlighted in yellow. Um, two of those were some resignations um, from some aides. Um, one of them I want to make sure to point out because she has worked with our district for over 22 years. Um, Ann Howard, if any of you know who Ann is, um, she is a fantastic uh, aide that we have down at the primary elementary campus. 
She's worked with us for 22 and a half years and she has put in for her retirement effective January 1st of 2025. So I wanna make sure to congratulate her and to thank her for all of her service. Um, on down in the report, you'll notice that um, section B is just some volunteers for athletics. Um, we have a correction um, to a supplemental and fine arts, uh, splitting up a supplemental for um, orchestra director. We have Mrs. Dennity and also Mrs. Birkin who are gonna be splitting that. Um, there was a requirement for um, our RESA folks. So we have mentors for our uh, new staff um, for resident educator and those are listed there. Um, and then one other thing to note would be if you look down at um, E2, we have some movement in the transportation department as well. Hip, hip, hooray. Um, so uh, those are the pieces I wanted to make sure to draw your attention to, but I am certainly um, willing to answer any questions you may have about this particular agenda. Any questions for Mr. Collier? All right, do we have a motion to approve the recommendations? I don't know. A roll call, please. Dr. Swatchenow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Mrs. Jarenick? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. All right. I do have uh, one more um, note that I want to make sure to bring up, and I bring this up often. Um, you guys will notice um, that the um, new FTE chart is available in Board Docs for you to view. Um, something that I would want to make sure to point out is that um, if you recall that we've talked about, we had those ESSER positions, there were 7.5 positions, two and a half reading teachers, five aides, um, all of those positions we are continuing. The good news about that is that um, Mr. SB has talked about that those have been already in our forecast and that those are already accounted for. And then of course, uh, right now we've had a couple of bus drivers who have stepped away and then we have been hiring additional bus drivers um, our um, double down efforts to uh, acquire more bus drivers has, um, it's, it's worked pretty well. Um, I'm uh, really happy that we are in a much better spot than we were at the beginning of last school year. Um, so if you're looking at the FTE chart, um, just make sure to notice that the seven and a half ESSER positions plus the four positions for bus driving, that uh, 11 and a half is only 0.6 away from where we were for the previous year. So all of the moving and all of the new staffing and all of those things. Um, of course, I, I know that we talked about the savings chart that we've had over the years, um, that we're still in the good there. The ESSER positions are already in the budget um, and we've only added 0.6 staff of all of the categories. So uh, make sure to read the notes for anybody who's interested, wants to look at the FTE chart, not just looking at the numbers, but also the notes that are listed below. So colorful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All kidding aside, we appreciate your careful uh, work on that and making sure that uh, we're staying where we want to be in terms of our goals and, and maintaining a, a robust staff. And so we appreciate all your efforts. There. Garth, I know you keep track. Uh, and Garth does a great job of making sure we're, we're keeping an eye on the FTEs. The, uh, this, the savings from last year to this year, while, while we've added some FTEs for the ESSERs uh, altogether, the saving from last year to this year, you've, you've got it at about what? Yeah, it's around 130,000. Right. So there, you look at FTEs, but you also look at actual cost. And Garth's done a great job of being able to, the actual cost is is less than it was the prior year, even though we've added quite a few positions. So. Um, something to keep in mind is that um, I know that the kind of like track record for um, the savings, the cost savings documents, over the past couple of years, we had some room uh, to be able to have some cost savings um, through um, attrition with staff. Those years, we were able to do more of that. We're now getting at the point to where we're basically at that saturation point um, to where I feel like that we are uh, pretty appropriately staffed for the things that we have talked about and the things that we are wanting to do. Um, so that 800,000 two years ago to 600,000 now to the 130,000, um, we're getting to the point to where we're not able to, if there is a position, we're most likely going to have to replace that position. And depending upon the position, maybe we won't be looking at only brand new teachers or first or second year teachers, but depending upon the position, we may have to be able to, and, and I know we've talked about this at different times, um, we may have to attract some talent 
that is, you know, maybe five years or more. Um, so this is, um, you know, this is a major part of my role. It's also a role that Mike has experience in. So we talk about these kinds of things on a daily basis. Um, and with our uh, new treasurer that we have, I can tell you that there is no, com there isn't any conversation that we're having about adding staff or taking away staff that the three of us aren't talking about uh, and what that impact would be for student services um, and for our teaching and learning department, but also while being um, financially, you know, wise with our money as well. So uh, in a meeting today, that budget maybe isn't as healthy as you think it is, but we thought it was healthy. No, um, it's just every time we bring something up, Mr. Espy is, is very, is very quick to make sure to let us know that we need to be make sure to, uh, Make sure to keep an eye on that target. Which Try to great. bring them back down to earth. Every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, I do want to also say, though, that with that 130,000, that's just looking at salary. That's not factoring in the additional benefits. So 17% at minimum should be added to that um, when you think about savings as well. So keeping that in mind. Correct. Uh, the last thing I would say is uh, for our parents to to realize the reason we do so well on the report card is the experienced staff we have, and they are unbelievable. Um, and they're also very good mentors for these younger teachers that we're hiring. At some point, uh, as the veteran teachers get to exercise their right with retirement, that that is where we're making sure these these younger teachers are learning from our staff and, and kind of learning the, the Loveland way. And I think Garth has done a very good job of getting young teachers. We're lucky because we are such a great district. We get the best talent in my, in my view. We don't want for positions because people want to be here. Uh, but then also mentoring the teachers as they come in is, is important too. So Garth, Garth, I can't say enough words about how many good things Garth does for, for people and our, and our staff is just unbelievable. Maybe 2.75 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give the chart a 5 and the presentation. <laughs> Continuous improvement. I like the honesty. Continuous it's good. Improvement. Yeah. Um, but, and all kidding aside, and, and we've spoken about this until I think we're all blue in the face, one of the concerns that I've always had when we're adding staff is, on the one hand, we want to maintain our excellence and how important it is to be a district that other people look towards to see how they should run their districts and how they should educate our, chil our, our children. Um, but also, you know, we've, we've managed cost savings by the fact that our demographic bulge in teachers is more experienced teachers rolling off. And every time we add staff, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we'll be paying that price. Correct. Now, yeah, I won't is... be here to be complaining about it then, but I expect <laughs> yeah. you to be. <laughs> yeah, which is why I brought up that, you know, we're kind of at that saturation point and that there, there is going to be times at which um, that we can't continue to have inexperienced teachers bringing them on. There's going to have to be times in, in certain places where uh, we might want to bring some experienced uh, folks with us. Um, because we don't want to be in the situation that we're going to find ourselves in, which is we have quite a few staff. Um, if you look at the next 10 years, it is uh, unbelievable the number of staff that we are going to probably be turning over uh, due to retirement. Um, and, um, you know, the kind of like four to eight year range is a big chunk. So uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I think we've done a good job of kind of tightening our belt and doing uh, what we need to do um, fiscally. But we're going to have to make sure to uh, have our best effort to keep our results uh, where they're at now. And I'll give you a five on that, too. You've done great. <laughs> Thanks. All right, thank you, Garth. Um, then we now move on to another item. And um, this is, uh, first of all, we need to waive the first reading of the student absence excuses policy. Um, so do you want to say something about the waiver first? Yeah, before we get so... So I know, that, and I know that that was a, a later addition. So I want to make sure to answer any of the questions you may have. The uh, the point at which having uh, that to be waived would be for us to be able to, if you guys so choose to uh, vote for that and it passes, then we can go ahead and make the change and start acting on that change. Um, really, what we're talking about here in this uh, policy JED, which is student absences and excuses, there was just a section. Um, that when we were moving from NEOLA over to our new policies, 
a section that wasn't um, kept in there and we do want it in there. And it has to do with if we have families who are taking long extended trips um, and we're talking maybe a month or longer being gone, that we have the ability to ask them to withdraw and then re-enroll when they come back. Um, we have quite a few families that uh, do things like that and we work with them and things, things are fine. But in terms of accurately representing um, us kind of like accounting for students, it's a problem for us if we're not uh, have that piece on our policy, which is why I'm bringing it to you now. Thanks to everyone. It, it makes sense to me that language um, of the addition was just was a little bit interesting, which it says parents and guardians will be requested to withdraw their children. The, the, uh, yeah. Well, let's, are there any teeth to that? Let's, let's do the waiver yeah. vote first, and then we can actually discuss the policy just so we don't get confused as to where we are on the agenda. So if there are any other questions about why we're doing the waiver, let's vote on that and then we can talk about the policy. All right, uh, can we have a motion to waive the first reading of the proposed changes to the policy JED? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eiler? Yes. Mrs. Jarenick? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, Dr. Policy, you had a question about our policy. <laughs> Garth, can you yes. answer my question? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can. Um, so we we aren't able to, um, you can't force a withdrawal, but we can request. Um, and we can put things in place to make sure that that request is something that isn't just a kind of like a, like a threat. You know what I mean? We are working with these families, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we aren't inaccurately reporting our attendance numbers. Um, so we support what they're doing. Um, a lot of these are uh, trips that are out of the country, back to a home country. And we work with these families all the time and we want what's best, but at the same time, us working with those families and doing what's best for those students, we don't want that to have a negative impact on our accounting purposes for what it is that we're trying to do. Um, so we just are you know, uh, being able to talk to them about why uh, we would have them withdraw and what processes we would have them follow to re-enroll to quickly have that happen. Um, it just enables us to be able to uh, do, in my opinion, what is the right thing to do um, so we don't have students missing uh, and being unaccounted for a month at a time. Any other questions? We have a motion to approve the policy change. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Mrs. Jarenek? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank Garth. you. Thanks, Garth. Moving on then to our treasurer report. Thank you, President Eilert, members of the board. Um, happy to bring the treasurer's report to you this evening. When we look at July monthly analysis, 8.3% uh, through fiscal year 25, which is one month, um, we are currently seeing expenditures and revenues that are currently showing a positive cash impact on the cash balance, uh, equal to about 0.5% of the forecasted expenditures. When we look at the expenditures specifically, 0.5% uh, negative variance to forecasted expenditures, um, what we're seeing there is just some... Uh, Slight, slight variances in all of the different categories that are leading to that. Some are up, some are down, but overall expenditures are 0.5% negative variance. With the revenues, we're seeing a 1% positive variance to the forecasted revenues. When we look at interest income, obviously the month to date with it being July and the fiscal year to date are going to equal, which is 83,615.14. When we look at the investment analysis, um, some things that I'm looking for and that I'm really working on is um, strategizing with Red Tree Investment Group. Uh, talk with them at least once a week um, with you know, the overall uh, strategy for how we're investing our funds. Something that I'm looking at, and you can see it's, it's a slight variance uh, in the benchmark interest rates in Star, Ohio, 5.46 and 23 to 5.44. Um, we do anticipate that that's gonna go down. Um, so what we're doing is working on investments that are going to still be liquid enough for the district to be able to pull out those funds and use for our expenses. 
but also protecting ourselves from lower interest rates that we uh, plan and that we, we foresee happening. Some other things to note in here, the commercial paper is not showing a monthly income. That's because those um, come due in November, December, and January, and that's when we'll start to see the, that monthly income show up there. Uh, and then I'll talk about investments a little bit later with another resolution that are that's that's coming up. Um, when we look at the next slide, um, ongoing projects in the Treasurer's Department is we're working on a program called Total Pay. We currently work with Repay, which is the company that that um, actually has created this Total Pay system. Um, what we do now is we actually pay some of our bills with virtual cards and we're able to get rebates on that. So essentially getting paid to pay our bills. Um, the district's been with Repay for a while, um, but what we're looking at doing now is expanding that to ACH payments and also check payments. So those would be all made through total pay. It actually would help with our, um, with just the fr fraud that, that some districts are seeing. The checks would actually come from a um, trust account, not our actual bank account. So it actually protects us. They would do all the work of actually trying to get the vendors to go to ACH payments or the um, vendor payments that we're currently using and then cut checks for all of the others. We also still have the ability to hold checks here. So if we had an emergency, we needed to cut a check, we would still be able to do that here locally. Um, one of the other items we're working on is rolling out electronic timesheets. Um, Trying to get rid of the uh, the old school, uh, you know, punches, which we don't actually use. We do paper, but um, you know, if you've learned anything about me in the last couple months, it's that I'm I'm not a fan of having paper around. So we're trying to get to uh, electronic process. We've already gotten our nutrition services, our maintenance of custodians, and secretaries utilizing that, and we're rolling that out kind of a department at a time. Um, continuing to develop standard operating procedures. Uh, throughout the district. Um, we had a, I just want to give kudos to all of our secretaries. We had a meeting last week um, where we were able to go over and kind of allow them to learn from one another and kind of share some best practices, but also set the standards um, for what we're trying to do from a financial standpoint. We created some great documentation that allows us, if we have an onboarding secretary, to know exactly how they're able to do all those processes. And that's just one example of what we're trying to work on um, we're also working on rolling out financial reports for all advisors. Uh, I met with all of the advisors at the high school, and I also actually met with all the high school staff during um, one of the in-service days last last week. And um, as they are doing their budgets, they're, we're starting to set up automated reports that come to them every week, so they know, um, you know, really what's going on with their with their uh, club or um, group that they're sponsoring but also to, to verify that revenue is coming in the right way and the expenditures are going out the right way as well and kind of empowering them to, to kind of be the leaders of those groups. And then um, we're just continuing to add multiple layers of payment approval procedures. We have four layers now before a check goes out the door to verify that it's accurate. Um, and then we also have fraud prevention software that I've mentioned before. Once the check is created, I approve them or uh, our assistant treasurer approves them before the check leaves the, the location. So, um, you know, just some processes that we're continuing to, to kind of work through and continue to bolster uh, within the district. Any questions on that? Thank you. Sherry's so happy to share. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. We're ready to. Yep. Vote then to approve the reports. Uh, we need a motion in a second. Yeah. Um, so moved. Great. Now roll call, please. Mrs. Jarenick? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Excellent. All right. Then moving on to 7.2 fund to fund transfer. Yes. Yeah, so this is actually a club that uh, no longer meets, it's the Archery Club. Um, the last time that they met and were organized was 2000. Um, and so because that club is no longer active, 
we're actually able to track down the president of that club from 2020. And you'll see that on the attachment. We have to have the, that signature to be able to donate those funds. And essentially what we're trying to do is transfer the remaining funds from the archery club into the general fund. Uh, and then that will go towards physical education students at the high school. Excellent. Any questions on that? All right, then we have a motion to approve the fund to fund transfer as presented. A second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eiler? Yes. Mrs. Chernick? Yes. Excellent. Good work on finding the person and so we don't have to go <laughs> through the state to do a whole process for that. I did not track them down, so I think the kudos should go to the high school staff for doing that. But um, they were they were probably not happy when I told them they had to do that, but they made it happen. So kudos to them. To yes. Excellent. All right. Moving on to 7.3, authorization of deposit funds. So I'm happy to talk about this a little bit. What this is, is this represents uh, Build America bonds from 2009 and 2010 that um, the district engaged with and borrowed from to do electric and engine en energy saving projects. So these projects were really like the lighting that we see um, here that the district has now. And it was the idea was to save funds. Um, on electric bills and you know our utility bills going forward. Um, this was a very interesting kind of borrowing because it came after the 2008 recession that we saw. Um, and it was, it, it, it was kind of a sweetheart deal in some ways. And the fact that um, investors were able to essentially save um, the tax liability, but also that it was allowed to um, accrue interest. So, over time, the district made payments to come up to the amount of the entire borrowing. Um, but at that same time, there was a trust company that was holding it and allowing interest to accrue. So this represents the interest that has accrued over that time. Um, I spent quite a bit of time with our bond council working through this to prepare these resolutions for you, as well as the other legalese that we have to do to um, essentially receive the funds. We are still working on one piece of it to make sure that there is no arbitrage calculation. Um, arbitrage is when you essentially borrow and you don't spend the money fast enough. We don't think that that's going to be the case. There was an arbitrage calculation done in 2016 for our bond council. Um, so that's going to be the final piece. That would just be an expense um, on this revenue. Uh, but this resolution essentially allows us to deposit these funds into the general fund which then I would like to immediately invest. So if anyone's not looking at this document, that's going to mean we're having how much money? I'll let you share the amount. 772482233 Great. Uh, not to be exact or anything. <laughs> Um, so that that would you know that would be the funds that we would immediately invest. Um, another thing to note about this is the district doesn't have any other kind of investments that are or borrowings where we would see this kind of interest payment. Um, but this you know in work again working with our bond council, what I was told is that this is a an extreme success because uh, uh, some districts that did this borrowing did not spend the money in the correct period of time and incurred um, penalties because we did the projects in the period of time that we were supposed to, um, you know, we, we were essentially al allowed this interest. Some districts are, have not seen the kind of interest um, that, that we've seen. Part of this just goes back to our trust uh, and our uh, investment trust that, that, and all the investments that they've done um, since that time as well. Thanks to all your predecessors and uh, those that have worked to make sure that we were doing all of that well and great thing to have these funds coming into the district. Um, do we have then a motion to approve the resolution as presented? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Dr. Swachanow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Mrs. Jarenek? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. All right, excellent. Thank you. 
7.4 of the license agreement. This is an agreement. Um, uh, actually, it's just a, another agreement that extends the, the current agreement that we have with um, Loveland Storm um, to uh, continue to allow them to use our facilities and then bring in some additional revenue for the district. This is a two-year agreement. Um, I think um, you know, Mr. Mr. Bryant and I kind of worked through this. He, he did a lot of the legwork, um, but I'm thinking that once we get through this next two years, it might be time to look at a more extended agreement with with Storm. You remind me, what's the where are we in the life cycle of the field that's going to be used? Another five to seven years since he wasn't at the microphone. Yes. And then just remind me, because there used to be a transfer each year into a fund for the turf that I don't remember seeing in the past year. There is, there's not been, but we're actually depositing revenues directly into it. So there's no need for that transfer. And we're also not spending, spending out of that fund, which had been the, the case in the past for like field lining and things like that. That actually comes from the athletic budget. So nothing going out, revenue coming in. Perfect. And, and again, an example of partnering with our community in order to decrease our, our overall cost to the taxpayer. Yes. Well, other clubs have the opportunity as well to wear their name in the hat when this one's up. They're Loveland based. I don't, I don't see any clubs. reason why. It would be something we would definitely evaluate. Um, it would be something that we would evaluate. <laughs> Can you say it again. <laughs> it would be something that we would evaluate. It's going to be a meme of you guys. The <laughs> price, the the price point, and the revenue that's generated is is significant. Uh, just making sure that we were able to work with one group who serves so many kids within Loveland. Um, is something that I know is important to, to me and also the board. So we would evaluate anything, but this partnership has been incredibly beneficial for the school district. You've got experience, right? In previous work and having a multiple agreements like this um, operating at once and, and part of your interest would be to see what other opportunities there might be in the future. 100%, 100%. Well, and I, I know that we've talked about this before, and, and one of the reasons that we initially went with this group was because there is the, they served Loveland and pretty much only Loveland. Is there, this is what I'm asking as a doctor of policy, do we have a policy that states how we address these decisions so there's no accusations in the future of favoritism or insider dealing? I'm not aware, but I can definitely research that. Sounds like something I might have to look into. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe we, we looked when we were doing the policies. Uh, uh, we, that was one that uh, I know we had chatted with Mr. Ames about. I believe there is a line in there that allows the superintendent to make a decision if it's based on, um, it's not necessarily based on the percent of athletes or whoever, whatever group we're doing that are Loveland students. It would be based on the agreement. So it gives us a little flexibility, but we can double check that. I know... And working with uh, Rich quite a bit, I think it it is incumbent upon us to make sure we're looking at every avenue we can to bring in revenue and, and also help out the community and the and the kids. And it, to me, it's almost a little bit of two competing masters, and how do we balance between right, those two right, things? Right. right. Yep. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, do we have a motion to approve the agreement as presented? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Mrs. Jaranek? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. Excellent. All right. 7.5 donations. Yeah, I just uh, want to, would love to accept the donation and uh, ask the board to accept the donation of $300 from Kevin and Cecilia Watts uh, to the Feed the Kids Fund. So moved. Second. And thank you to them. Roll call, please. Reverend Eilert? Yes. Mrs. Jaranek? Yes. Mrs. Mangan? Yes. Dr. Swetchenow? Yes. Mrs. Washburn? Yes. Thank you, and thank you to the Watts family for their generous donation.
All right, and finally, 7.6 contracts. Yes, I'm happy to bring both of these agreements to you this evening. One is actually not tied to any money. It's just a five-year agreement with CentOS. Mr. Brian and I have had uh, several meetings with CentOS, and I don't know if you want to take it away and kind of talk about what this agreement signifies, but I'm happy to talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It is a, the agreement is a five-year agreement. It's a significant um, increase in efficiency on how we're able to do business. This will help uh, our custodial staffs uh, across the board as far as just becoming efficient with ordering uh, chemicals, disposables, uh, and CentOS, what they operate, they're so, they're so big that they are able to offer uh, customer service that's just unparalleled. So what we'll see is an uptick in, uh, not only is there a financial side that's a gain, uh, we will see an uptick in how our custodians are able to function based on efficiency, which the work is the work. Um, and if we can become more efficient at doing the work with the same amount of people and we're saving money, it seems like something we should do. And then the other contract is the Aubrey contract. It's a three-year agreement. I want to recognize Mr. Samuels for all of his hard work with this, with negotiating and keeping this, this contract low. Um, we were talking earlier today that, you know, this is this contract is roughly 50% of what other districts are paying for similar service. Uh, I think that's part due to his hard work and, you know, his team and, and everything that they do with that. Um, and also Dr. Puerta as well, um, but also just the partnership that the district has had with Aubrey over the years. Uh, I think that this is, um, you know, obviously a great thing that allows us to get uh, a, a great product, but also uh, be able to do so with a fiscal mind. Great. All right. Um, mentioned the other day to them that we have a similar arrangement with CentOS with, with our organization found it very beneficial works very well and very pleased with the service so um we have a motion to approve these two contracts so Second. roll call please mrs jaranek yes mrs mangan yes dr swachanow yes mrs washburn yes reverend Adler. yes all right excellent there's no other business, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the meeting is adjourned at 7.43 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>